In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to rotary machining. This is where we take one of the linear axes and wrap it around a cylinder. This is only applicable if you have a rotary axis on your machine and a compatible post processor to run it on your machine. So let's go to File, Close. OK, so let's begin by creating a new file. So in the job type, we're going to go ahead and select Rotary. Then we need to specify the job size, the Z0 position, X0, Y0 date and position and orientation of our part. So we'll begin by looking at the job size. Here we need to specify the length and the diameter of the material that we're using. In my example I'm going to go with a length of 12 inches and the diameter is going to be 3 inches. Then we move on to the Z0 position. Now the Z0 position you have two options. You can set it off the cylinder surface or we could set it off the cylinder axes. Now the cylinder axes is the most reliable choice as it's much harder for you to set your Z0 position uh, from the surface of the cylinder because that requires your cylinder to be a perfect circle for that to be correct. So we're going to use the cylinder axes option and this is the equivalent of setting your material to the bottom of your part on a regular three axis job. Then we move on to the XY datum position. So mine's set up to be in the lower left hand corner and then we move on to the orientation. Now this is your cylinder orientation and this will depend on your machine setup. So if you have a linear X axis you will then be looking at wrapping the Y value so you'd use this option. If your machine set up where you have a linear Y axis and then you'd end up wrapping the X values you'd use this option. Mine's set up uh, where we have a linear X axis and we're wrapping the Y values. So then we could then simply go ahead and press OK. So we're now in a job space that is defined by the settings that we entered in the rotary job setup form. We can see here that we have a width of 12 inches and we can see that the height is shown as 9.4248 and this is defined from the circumference of our cylinder when we specified a 3 inch diameter and the software has basically unwrapped it. And everything that we do in the software is going to be calculated in a flat environment and the only time this output will change to rotary is when we use the post processor that has the ability to do that. But we are able to visualise the rotary within our 3D view. OK, so let's go to our toolbar at the top here. So we have an option here to toggle the material block visibility uh, in our 3D view. It's currently switched off. We can see that because the light bulb is dimmed out. And if I click on that, uh, the light bulb is now on. It's telling me that we are looking at the material block visibility in our 3D view and I can see that because we can see this cylinder here. So this represents the cylinder that we set up in our job setup form. Now when we are working in a rotary job we have an extra icon up the top in our view toolbar and that is this option here uh, to toggle the automatic wrapping um, in our 3D view. So that's currently switched on, we can see that because of the light bulb, we can also see that because we are seeing a cylinder here so we are looking at our part in the 3D view um, as though it was wrapped. We can look at this from a flat environment by uh, toggling that off and so we're looking at an unwrapped part so this is kind of your standard flat environment. Uh, so those are your options to switch between the two different views. So I'm going to toggle the automatic wrapping on so I can see my cylinder and then for now I'm just going to undraw the material block visibility. And we're going to start by showing you some simple text to engrave to see what that looks like in a wrapped environment. So let's switch over to the 2D view and we'll use this option here to zoom to fit 
So we're going to look at using this tool here, draw text within a vector box. Now I haven't got a vector, when we don't have a vector box to use to create text, it's just going to take the dimensions of our job space. You can see that kind of dashed border going around our work area here. Here we just enter some text, so I'm just going to type in wrapped and then rotary and then text like so. Uh, we can specify a font so I'm just going to go and press A for Arial, select Arial, uh, text alignment we'll put that in the center uh, and then we'll just go some of the settings that we already have in here and I could simply press close and we've got our text in place and now we could look at running some toolpaths on it to see this as part of a wrapped job. So let's switch over to our toolpaths tab. Now the first thing we want to do is just check over our material setup. So here we've got a diameter of 3 inches, we set our XY0 to the lower left hand corner, our Z0 to the centre of our cylinder. Model position and material doesn't matter in this case because we aren't working with any 3D components. We haven't imported a full model to unwrap, we haven't brought in um, flat 3D models to wrap around a cylinder. Uh, we're just working purely with text and 2D, 2.5D toolpaths, so this doesn't matter here. Then you want to check uh, the rapid C gaps above the material um, are safe and appropriate for your particular setup. Home and start position and the Z gap above your material. So I'm going to make this uh, 1.8 for sufficient clearance. And you could simply go ahead and press OK. So with that text, let's go and create a simple pocket toolpath. We're going to set our start depth to be zero. The cut depth is going to be 0.1 of an inch. The tool that I plan to use is an eighth inch end mill. Check over the settings, ensuring that they're safe and appropriate. And then we could give our toolpath a name. We'll simply call this one pocket text. Press calculate and we can see the toolpath being wrapped around our cylinder and the software has automatically opened up the toolpath preview form so we can preview the toolpath as we'd like to see it on our machine. So let's go ahead and use this option here to preview the selected toolpath. Now you would have noticed for a split second there that the software unwrapped our part as it was calculating the toolpath preview. Even though we are previewing this in a wrapped environment, now that the software has calculated that preview, the software still thinks of this as a flat 3-axis toolpath and it will be the compatible post processor that will exchange the Y values for the rotary axis movement. So with the wrapped toggle option switch on, I am able to, use, to view this as if it was being wrapped and I can still view our part in a three axis environment by simply toggling that off and we can see this as if it were flat. Now if we put that back into a wrapped view as if I would see this when we come to machine my part, you can see that I'm able to see that text how it will look on our wrapped cylinder. I'm simply pressing the left mouse key and dragging my mouse to move um, our cylinder around to visualize that text. A few other nice options that we have within the 3D view are these options here and these will enable me to rotate my cylinder in increments of 30 degrees and you can see that the text that I've got there looks good and I'm happy uh, with the part that we've got. So let's close out of the preview toolpath form. I'm going to take that toolpath and we're just going to delete it. Yes I want to delete and now we could look at taking our text and this time we're going to look at using a v-carve toolpath. So with that same text selected let's go and use the v-carve toolpath. So here I'm going to have a start depth of zero. I'm not going to apply a flat depth in there. Tool I'm going to use uh, let's go to select 
we're going to use a 90 degree half inch v-bit check over the settings until we're in the safe and appropriate and then give that a name we'll call this one v-calf text press calculate and then if we just reset that preview because we left our preview on from our pocket text earlier and then we could simply go ahead and preview that toolpath again you'd have noticed that the software went into a flat environment whilst it calculated the preview and then it's automatically wrapped that back for us for the finished preview okay so I can see here we've got a uh, real nice text on there looks as I would have thought it would and this is how I'm going to see this on my machine so let's go and save out our toolpath for cutting. So we'll close out the preview toolpath form. We're going to go into the save toolpath option. You'll notice under toolpath to be saved, it has picked up the toolpath that we calculated earlier. And then all we need to do is select our post processor. And it's very important to note that the post processor has to support rotary moves. And this is the stage where the software is going to take what are essentially three axis calculated toolpaths and then convert them into rotary. Now, the post processor has to support rotary and needs to be set up so that it's configured correctly for what your rotary axis is. For example, example if I go down my post processor list I'm going to press M on the keyboard and that's going to take me to all of the post processors that begin with the letter M now I am using a Mac 3 post processor in my example and you'll see that we have various special posts here that wrap X to A and they wrap Y to A now in our case we are wrapping the Y axis so we are going to choose to wrap Y to A and A being the typical designated g-code for a rotary move so I'm going to use this option here then we simply go ahead and press save toolpath give that a name and then we can simply press save and then we could go ahead and take that toolpath over to our CNC machine to create this wrapped job so let's close out of our toolpaths form and then we'll go ahead and save this file. So we're going to go to save as and we're just going to call this one rotary text toolpath and then you can access that from the project file. And so that's really the basics for creating wrapped text and that completes this tutorial.